ge- I-, I said that on Twitter. Geographics play a big part into how people perceive you. I said if Drake was from the Bronx, that the, your their crown this over Biggie, everybody. You know, if he was from the Bronx, he wouldn't sound like that. We know I'm saying a hypothetical, and I I ain't gonna front. I hate fantasy, shit. but at the same time, let's be for real, bro. If Drake was from Harlem, bro, you know how many from Harlem be wild. You couldn't say nothing about Drake if that was from Harlem. Mm. If he was from New York, the thing is, is because he's a Canadian. Look at like yeah his background because he played like a soft character with the wheelchair Jimmy shit, and all of that and we first came out now don't don't get me wrong and this is something that I had controversy like not when it's necessarily controversy but when he made Tusi Slide I was kind of thrown off because I'm like oh, the, the gangster shit is kind of a lot for me you feel me because because when he first came out I accept you how I met you so when he first came out he was saying like he I remember him saying like oh, Wayne and them do that like I'm not somebody who do that but rapping wise how many do what they say for real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The one, the most of the ones that do what they say don't even make it that far. Yeah. That's so right. from an entertainment standpoint, I do get it. But at the same time, bro, we not we gonna say that this not hip hop, bro. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast. We're in the building. Special guest in here. Y'all know I'm really good at doing my research, but this one, <laughs> it was kind of tricky for me because this guy is um like, I mean, he's like 10 toes down in the music industry. Uh, worked at multiple different um, music la- labels, uh, Rockefeller being one, uh, QC. Now, congratulations to all the success. Work alongside academics, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Nadeska with Everyday Struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy is, I mean, no stranger to the cameras, no stranger to the microphone. Pause. But he he's one of them guys, man. Wayne knows in the building. It was good. He was popping. Ah, uh, it, it feels good to have you, bro. Nah, man. Uh, pause. That was crazy. But um, damn, that was crazy. Nah, but we ain't uh, about to make this. Thing. Nah, nah, we not gonna. It do might that. be that, but damn. we ain't gonna do that. We ain't gonna do that. But nah, but nah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I've been watching you. You know what I mean for a few years working. You mm-hmm. know what I mean and 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 doing your thing. And I remember we spoke a couple years ago about yeah. me potentially being on a, the pod. And at the time, it was like I had just moved to Atlanta. It was a lot going on. I never really got a chance to to do it. But I'm happy to be here now. Mm-hmm. Nah, I appreciate. I'm I'm glad you even went there. Cause why not? I was gonna, I'm gonna break the ice. <laughs> you know. I mean, you was one of the one, the one of the guys that I talked about. Not you specifically, but mm-hmm. your type. What you mean? You ain't never. That was your first time ever telling me that. My first time ever telling you what? Breaking it down of what took so long. Oh, that's because yo, all you right, told so me you was gonna come on the show. You gave me your number. Yeah, what I, my man. You we just had this conversation. Shout out yeah. to Giovanni behind behind the camera working the boards. He was like, you need to go outside. I'm like, bro, that shit don't mean nothing, man. You go outside, nigga, you get a number. They be like, yeah, they want, they want to work with you. They going to do all this, and then you hit them. They well, I don't be telling you. people I want to work with them. Yeah, That's I mean, one thing yeah. I don't do. But, but you told me you going to come on the show. I did, but I, all right, so let me let me give you some context as to why, right? Like, around the time, I think when, it was 2021 when we met. Yep. And, you know, 2021 was like, it, it was a lot going on. I had just, in 2020, I had lost my dad. Sorry to hear that. Uh, thank you. Um, and that was in September. January, I lost my aunt, who was his little sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, March, I lost my grandmother two weeks after my mom's 60th birthday. A month or two after that, I lost my godmother. And then I signed I signed my deal, you know what I mean, to work at QC. And I buy a house. And it was the greatest time of my life. But the 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 most, um hurt, uh, I wouldn't say hurtful, but I couldn't share that moment with the my grandmother. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I grew up, my, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother. Me and my mom shared a room until I was 10 years old. It was just me, my mother, and my grandmother. So it was like, I'm dealing with that. I'm dealing with coming down here and getting adjusted to living in the South. I'm um, working. I, I had just signed baby money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So at the time, it, if when I didn't respond, it wasn't intentional. No, for sure. Like I had a, a billion things going on, and, and, and you know, I apologize. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you know, <laughs> nah, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know what I mean? I appreciate... You like, and I'm pretty sure you you may have felt the way, but at the same time, I appreciate you even reaching back out. And when you reached back out, I said, and I was like, hell yeah, let's yeah, do it. It was quick. Yeah. Nah, it's damn, bro. I'm glad we were even able to have this conversation because a lot of times people don't understand the things that's going on behind closed door with people, right? Facts. And I'm and I'm talking specifically for the ones coming up, and I'm pretty sure you felt this along the way. Mm-hmm. Like you think like 
you working hard, you, you people were seeing you, they yeah. saluting you, but they're not really like going all the way through with the business type. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. And it, it it's super important for people to see things like this and see people being persistent because, bro, you can't take it personal. You know, listen, you don't I've, know what's going let on. Let me tell you something, bro. I've taken tons of shit personal. Like business is personal. Like let's not get it twisted. Business is definitely personal. It's just that it's the level of like, it's the level of conduct that how a person deals with you, right? Yeah. Like, um, for myself, the reason why I'm always able to like, I'm I'm 41 now. Mm. The reason why I'm always able to have like a great relationship with like younger people and people my age and people older is because when I was young, I was the the overlooked person. Mm. I was the kid that came in the room with the idea and the this and the that, and the people tell me it's never going to work, and I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm young. So when I talk with people younger than me, I don't talk at them. I talk with them mm. to figure shit out and 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 just being honest. And as, like, being a man, bro, like, growing up, I started to realize more, like, the, the more I was comfortable with myself and in touch with my feelings for real, I'm able to express myself in a way where I could say I apologize about something because I don't have no ego. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I come from the hood, like, like, like Jay said, like the real hood, not the rap hood. Like I come from the hood. Like I might be one of the most successful people from where I'm from, and I don't take that shit lightly. So if it's anybody that I could ever direct or help get to a certain place, I help. But it's just sometimes life get in the way. Yeah, right. I done been like we've all like listen. You live to be a certain age, like you gonna go through some. Shit. No, so it's like you know, I just be honest more than anything. Like if I can't do something, I'll be like nah. But sometimes I don't even get get a chance to tell you nah because I got so much going on. Mm. Feel me. Nah, so we was talking about the uh, me doing my research, mm -hmm. and I proud myself on like don't getting prepared for my guests. Yeah. And I looked at a few of your interviews, but <laughs> I kind of I had to stop them halfway through every one, right? Because I wanted to come up here and just ask questions out of being a fan. They say sometimes the best interviews, well, the best interviews come from you being a fan of a person. Mm. And like even when I'm hearing you talk off camera, well, we might have caught it on camera, but basically you're saying like you're more than just music. Yeah. And it's funny the different perspectives because I just said not too long ago on, on Mandy and now the show how I feel like my work ethic has gotten me into a lot of the rooms. Mm -hmm. And one thing I wish that I had more of was the the music wisdom and the, the, the culture knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I was coming up, I wasn't in the industry. Right. I didn't really care about it. I got in 2017 and I started learning, but I feel like that was late compared yeah. to the people I'm talking to. Yeah. And I just wanted to uh, ask you questions just as a fan. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. I don't like that. I don't trip off that. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, one, let's go. Before I start the, the questions, you said, or the questions about my fans, you were saying something about um, you being, you don't want to be just looked at as music. Is that because you've been there for so long? No, 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 no. Not just that. It's just that, like, people don't allow people to grow. Mm. You know, um, yes, I love I love music, bro. I, I like, I, I, the first time I seen Walk This Way with Run DMC and Aerosmith and them niggas had on the Adidas with no laces and they bust through the wall and they had on them black jackets with the top hats and the, the the glasses on and all. I was probably like six or seven years old. And the first time I seen like Push It by uh, Salt and Pepper, I got so many moments that make me love music. First time I seen the movie Juice when I was nine, I think I was eight or nine, my mom took me to movies to see Juice. And I seen Q and I wanted to be a DJ. Mm. Like I, I, I love music and that's cool, but like being 40 years old, the cult, like hip hop culture is not just music, it's like a lifestyle. Mm. So a lot of the lifestyle is detrimental to our way of living. That's a fact, yeah. Like, bro, like how many artists, yeah, everybody talks, everybody loves to emphasize on the artists that die from street shit. Nobody don't talk about the artists that die from their health. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like a black rob, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and others who have died from health reasons, a big pun. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't harbor on that because we so caught up into what the culture about that we ain't even taking care of our health. So it's like, while I do love music, there are other aspects of life that I want to venture into. I love sneakers and sneaker culture. That's a, that's a part of hip hop culture as well, but it's also a part of sports. I want to learn sports. Who didn't grow up? I, I, I was born in 1982. Michael Jordan is my GOAT. All y'all kids who LeBron is y'all goat, y'all got more Jordans than y'all got LeBrons. Let's just leave that there. <laughs> but um, 
I wanted to be like Mike. You feel me? Now, at the point where I couldn't be like Mike, I learned that just because I can't make it to the NBA don't mean I can't get a check from the NBA. Mm. Don't mean I can't, you know, have some influence on a player or work with players. So there's so many different things that as I've gotten older that I've wanted to get into. Like, I've been getting into the game and thing. Like, game, playing video I've gotten in trouble when I was a kid for playing video games so much in my life. I'm like, I got to make some money out of this. I hosted a Mortal Kombat tournament last year for HBCU students where a kid walked away with $70,000 you know what I mean? For playing Mortal Kombat for two weeks. So it's it's other avenues and other ways out there to get it other than just music. And I'm not I'm not saying like I'm not dissing music at all, but it's like music is one hustle. It's other ways that I wanna learn and explore. You know what I mean? I'm forty one. I, I wanna live another forty years. Mm. You feel me? Yo, first of all, you're 41. You look damn good for your age. No man. drugs. Thank God. you, brother. Damn, bro. Like, <laughs> Thank you, bro. I would have never thought you was no 41. <laughs> yeah, bro. I be talking about older here. You almost 10 years older than me. Bro, my, my oldest daughter just graduated college last year. You said you feel damn. me? Like living on her own now. You feel me? Like I got a dope child. Like, so it's like I come from the era of like when you if you had a child, people was like, your life is over. Mm. Or you ain't gonna have this, you ain't gonna have that. I didn't I didn't. I didn't subscribe to none of that. I said, Sh I want to be able to have everything I got and more for mine. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, man, be, getting older, it teaches you different things. The things that was important to me 10 years ago and 20 years ago really ain't as important as they, they are today to me. Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, if your lady's on go, but your meat got a fro. <laughs> Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, don't use the clippers you use on your face. On the head below your waist. Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, fellas, you want that jumper like Steph Curry? But your nuts is fairy? But nah, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Use promo code JHill for 20% off. They're going to give you a, the, the man bag. You know what I'm saying? When you're traveling, put all your grooming needs in the man bag. You don't got to carry it in your book bag. You don't got to be all over the place. You feel what I'm saying? They got the nose trimmer. Listen, man, some of y'all know it's disgusting out here. Get you a nose trimmer, for real. This shit is disgusting. Some ball deodorant for when you out and about. You about to get it on. Put that ball deodorant on. Smell fresh, brand new. And of course, the lawnmower five. Make sure you holler at my guys at Manscaped. J Hill promo code. J Hill one word. Twenty percent off and free shipping. You know what I yeah. Yo, all right, here we go. What? What? Where did it all start, bro? Cause like <coughs> my introduction. As ignorant as it may sound to you, of course, was everyday struggle. That's not ignorant. But again, what I said earlier, I'm always aware of my, my like my peers. Yeah. Doing research, I found out that now nah, you was you you was qualified to be there. So I found that out through me seeing you on everyday struggle. So I'm yeah. wondering, I didn't see that. What? How did it start for you? What do you mean everyday struggle? No, nah, like just you becoming this Wayne No guy and this. Well, Wayne No. I mean, the thing is, the Wayne No. That's my father's. That was my father's nickname. Um, I'm I'm a second. I'm not a junior. I'm a second. So growing up, my nickname was Little Wayne until I got tall enough, and then people just started calling me Wayne. And then Wayno was my because my father's middle name was a O, so mm -hmm. people used to call him Wayno. And then that just transpired to me. And the crazy thing about it is like in Harlem, there's two other Waynos, and they was like really treacherous people. So and one and one of them was my home. I know both of them. One of them passed away, but um, I used to get like flack from people that would hear shit about them. You know what I mean? And think it's me. So um, for me, Wayno started as me just being a kid, navigating, living in the Bronx, and then moving to Harlem as a teenager. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, just trying to stay out of trouble, but getting into trouble mm. and, and learning myself and, and, and not being myself and not being comfortable with myself um, and, and being somebody I wasn't until I discovered who I really was. You know what I'm saying? When was that when you discovered who you really was? What age was that, if you could put a number on it? Like 27, 28. Bro, it's right. crazy because we always talk so much about like 18 being grown, 21, 23. No. And it's like, bro, you're still, you're still I, but, learning. I mean, keep in mind, right? The whole 18-year-old sh**, the 21-year-old sh**, that's like, those are rules that has been placed before us by people who didn't make those rules for us in the first place, right? So it's like, you know, it, times was different when my mom was a kid and her mom was a kid. So there was a sense of urgency back in those times to be an adult because that meant your survival, how mature you were. Mm. Now, as we got older, 
and like every generation, like the parenting changes. And like, you know, I kind of, my mom had me when she was 21. So, and I was the only child for 10 years and, and my mom was my dad's six baby moms. So like I grew up with my moms, you know what I'm saying? And then my mom's had my sister when she was 31. And sometimes I look at when becoming, now I'm 41, I look back at the woman my mom was or the man my pops was at those times. And in those times, it helps me understand a little bit more about them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I don't subscribe to that whole, oh, you 18, you could get out and live on your, who knows anything when they're 18? Yeah. I, I, yo, and, and what I've noticed more, like, when it comes to men, I'm a, like, as a man, I'll be accountable for other men in the sense of, like, um, my generation of men didn't really take the time to raise the next generation of men. But when I look at it from an overall standpoint, the ones over me didn't do that good of a job either. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody likes to act like their uh, their time was the best time. Oh, man, at least when we was killing, it was over drugs and territory. What? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, So people act like, like there's this moral or, you know, there's this moral high ground that they could like stand on. Like cold. Yeah, yeah, like there's no, that's no cold. My yeah. kids was getting kidnapped, all types like of things. We hear that, like, bro, back in my day when it's the streets, woman, like, woman and children was off limits. Like, what? Man, there wasn't no women and children <laughs> off limits. Bro, that is the most ridiculous thing. Bro, yo, I, and that's what, that's from a movie. Mm. This is talking about Scarfish. Yo, no women, no children. Meantime, go look up statistics from every year of every place where it was poverty. It was men and, it was women and children dying mm. by stray bullets, by drugs, by all types of shit. So it's like, I don't really want to harbor on a negative, but I'm just saying it's like, as a people, like we always trying to talk about like how better we did it, how better, how good we doing it, and we all we the segregation became amongst ourselves. Mm. Once we got together, we segregated from once each other. I right? I'm from the east side, you know what I mean, of Harlem, east side of Harlem. Like I'm not gonna say we don't rock with the west side, but but personality wise, we totally different, mm. totally different. I give you an example, Kim and Mace, they from the west side, Jim Jones from the east. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so like, it, it, person that like that's too different. Like, that's yeah, different. yeah. And, and one and another thing, the East Side is the same everywhere. I've been to Detroit. East Side is oh yeah, everybody think that they dirty. That's crazy. That they grimy. It's the, it's the same thing. That's crazy. It's the East Side and the West Side is the same that's place insane. everywhere. And they be like, oh, they don't get. We be the ones getting money, not talking about it. That's West Side be the ones getting money, flashy with it. That's crazy that you. It's, I've lived. I've lived a long time, bro. Bro, that's insane <laughs> lived, that you said that. That's just f got me some up. experience. Like in Baltimore, we say that like East Side is cruddy. Like they will, they will they rob, rob like, any. <laughs> that's what they say about West, the East Side. Bro, West Side flashy, fly. Uh, you know what I mean? All that glitz and glam. You know what I mean? That's crazy. But it's the same. But that's what it showed me. What it what that really showed me when I started learning that from going to being in South Central, being in. You know, I haven't. I wouldn't say I spent a lot of time in Baltimore, but excuse me, I've come across a lot of brothers and sisters from Baltimore. Um, being in New York, Jersey, whatever, is that poverty is the same everywhere. I say that all the time. We yeah. be acting like, yo, Chicago got it so crazy. It's the same, it's the same Facts. poverty, bro. Yeah, it is. It is. I that, used to, I, I, I lived in Maryland before too. Yeah, you said you hated it. Yeah, I hated it. But Maryland isn't Baltimore, though. You know that. It isn't, but I mean, it's one of the same. No, it's not. I mean, it, it's not, but it wasn't even. It wasn't like it. The reason why I hate it is because, like, for you, for instance, when you was in the seventh grade, imagine if you'd have had to go live in the Bronx. You t like, you say do and to and coo and you know what I mean? <laughs> what the f was that? I don't know. That's how I <laughs> talk. But they would have been frying you. So when I get to Maryland, they're frying me, bro. They listening to. F House music, I'm like, this shit is trash. Yeah. They are wilding me up on the bus going to school every day. I understand. Every when I went to college, wanted... they were listening to Google music. I didn't know what the fuck it was. I'm like, what is this? For real? Yeah, like, bro. that's why I said it's different, bro. Like, being in Baltimore, yeah. even though DC is an hour up the street, right. it's like, we ain't. It's culturally different. Yeah, it's way but see, different. But, but that's what I'm saying, right? So, like, but that's where, like, you said, where Wayno starts, it's like, it's all of these things, bro. Mm. It's, 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 it's my childhood. It's my, um, you know, my teenage years, it's my, my 20s, my 30s. And it's all like, I, I'm really a, a, my father really revered me highly because he told me that out of all his kids, I was the only one that was exactly like him. Mm. 
And I love it, but I hate it. You know what I mean? I, I love that, but I hate it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it is what it is. That's life. But mm -hmm. what about, um, when I say, I guess, Dwayne knowing, because the thing that I learned mm -hmm. about the coming of age, we talking about how I was introduced introduced mm -hmm. with uh, everyday struggle was you were really big on twitter that's what i i've heard i don't know how true that was yeah but i, I don't even know what that meant all right uh, just to, to to add to you what you just said right like twitter was something that my friend amir my my brother amir bassi he named my son he told me i used to be on myspace and when i was on myspace one thing i used to do is like i would also i would you know how old are you i'm 32 32. You was on MySpace? Yeah, yeah, I was on MySpace. She was like, all right, so on MySpace, you could write like. No, I was popping. That was prime. Was popping, I, was, yeah. Yeah, I was on MySpace. All right, so so on MySpace, I would write like, if I was feeling something, thinking something, I would write like these long paragraphs. Because I used to have it like this job I was I just used, didn't have to do. So I would write these long paragraphs. And people used to tell me at 22, 23, Yo, you should write a book or you should do this. And then when Twitter came out, Amir was like, Yo, you gotta make a Twitter. And I was like, I don't wanna make one. Every every social media platform, I was like, I ain't making it. And then when I made it, it was just like a few people on there, we just talking shit. And then it went from a few people talking shit to now like rappers is on there talking shit. But remember, I had already had experience in the music industry. Cause I started in the music industry when I was 18. You know so saying? music industry came before big Wayne No Twitter. Yeah, explosion. that was way before, bro. I was Wayno in music way before Twitter existed. I, bro, I worked at Rockefeller Records, and I, I got to Rockefeller Records in 2001. How did you get that job? I, I, by going through the mailroom. So so the way the the whole, I've been vocal about this in a lot of my interviews, is like um, I was fucking up in school really bad. My mom was going to send me down south to live with my, my, um, my aunt because I was in gangs and... I was around a lot of people that was hustling and all types of stuff, and I was doing really bad in school, and I had dropped out of school. And my mom was just like, yo, listen, um, if you're not going to go to school, she like, I want you to go back and get a diploma eventually, but she's like, if you're not going to go to school, you got to do something because I'm not going to be working eight hours of a day, coming home, cleaning, cooking for you and your sister, and you just sitting in here. You have to get a job. Mm. So my mom worked. My mom's job was she was like she was a, a her title was a job developer. So she prepared people for the workforce. So she worked for a nonprofit organization in the hood that like um you got people, let's say she might have somebody from Target reach out and say, Yo, we gotta fill this new Target location is open and we gotta fill fifty jobs, semi people. You know what I mean? She would get t take these people and ready them for for the workforce. So teach them how to conduct themselves on an interview, how to talk, look somebody in their eyes, shake a hand, do a handshake the right way, wear their clothes. Cause you'd be surprised how many people don't know that. Oh no, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I worked. I don't know. Probably in Baltimore, y'all probably got the same shit. Like summer youth, like yeah. when you were a kid. Youth works, we call it. Yeah. So it's called summer youth in New York. So I did summer youth a few times, and the lady who was running the summer youth program, she like was in a similar position like my mom. So they had got me an interview with a mailroom. And um, I went, I did the interview because I knew how to talk to people. That's one thing I, I, I honed in on, like, conversation. Like, I knew how to have a conversation. By the time I was five years old, my mom would tell me, like, people was always impressed with how I could speak, how well I could speak when I was really young. Mm -hmm. So my mom told me how to conduct myself. So I did the first interview, got it. Then I did the second interview. Then it was um, the building that they placed me at. They placed me in a building that was um, 825 8th Avenue. Um, all the music labels was in there. It was the Universal building. Mm. You know what I mean? So if you ever been to Universal, it's different than it is now, but it was um, Rockefeller in there, Murder, Inc., Def Jam, um, Tough Gong, which is Bob, Marty's, Bob Marley's family's label, um, Bloodline, which was um, DMX's label. I think Rough Riders had an office, but not at the one we was at, at the other building, like a couple blocks away. But I was there, and I was delivering mail as a 17-year-old kid. And then, you know, I just... I was the youngest person in the mailroom. All the dudes that was in there was in their 20s. Some of them was trying to rap. Some of them was just having a regular job. Some dudes was older. When I got in there that first day, I had the year, that year, I, it was the year 2000. That year, I seen the movie Backstage. And when I seen that movie Backstage, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to get into music. You know what I mean? And um, I got into that shit. And then, well, I got into what was delivering mail. And then I eventually lost my job in the mailroom. And then when I lost my job in the mailroom, I just hit my home girl up, Shari. She's the president of um, Rock Nation now, but she was um, Carlene um, Balin's assistant at Rockefeller. 
And um, I just asked her, me and Shari, I think I'm a year, I don't want to tell Shari age, but I'm like, go a year or two older than Shari, or, you know, we close in age. And I just asked her, I was like, because once I lost that job, I just knew, like, I didn't have shit to do. And I was probably, like, as a teenager, like we said, poverty is the same and generational is, like, the same. Same shit that was happening, like, my friends was going to jail for robberies and selling drugs. And, like, when I moved to Harlem, bro, every, this was the first place I ever lived in my life where everybody sold drugs. Everybody, bro. Like, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds selling drugs all day. So I was like, I know what's going to be my fate if I just sit on this block all day. And I um, I ended up, you know, going and getting an internship, and then that internship grew to a position. Damn, bro, that shit is crazy. I'm listening to it like, it's funny how you fell into it, how you, I guess, fell into it as somebody else's dream, like they wish they could have had. Well, no, shit. I'll say that, no, music was my dream when I was a kid. Media was in my dream. Music, I, when I seen backstage, bro, and I seen, like, I remember a scene where I see Tata, and I see Lenny S, and I see Murder, Tata's brother, and then I see, like, Skane, and, like, I knew who Jay Z was. I knew who DMX was. I knew who Beanie Siegel was, and Bleak, and DJ Clue, and Ja Rule, and Method Man, and Rep. I knew who all the rappers was, but I didn't know the people that was on the. I know all of these people now personally, but I didn't know that there was people behind that being a a kid. Mm. So when I seen Tata, I'm like, I don't know what he do, but maybe I could be him. I seen Lenny, I was like, I don't know what I what he do, but maybe I could be him. And then six months. I got a job where I see all of them. It, it It's unconventional. I don't even know. Like, shit was meant for me. Mm. I believe, like, that was for me. And that's why it happened the way it happened. But got in the Rockefeller. And when I got in the Rockefeller, you know, um, I I ain't make no money there. But, like, that was the years I would have been in college. So me and young Chris always call it our college years because mm. we'd have been in college at that time. You know what I mean? Yo, how much, how much do you contribute... Like you being in there, you seeing everything that happened in Rockefeller, being so early, like with all of your experience, how often is someone able to like penetrate that space, not being in those circles? Like somebody that's trying to get into the music industry. I don't know. It's totally different now, because like you could DM somebody now, and they could, or you could go to an event. You could like go to an event and see like, like when I was bro, when I was a teenager, like. You, the, even a way, I, I skipped over a very, very important part of my story. Omieli McIntosh, who ran Jay Z's fan club called Fan Fam, because I was like the youngest kid, I was a teenager when I was in the mailroom, like I would help her after work with sending out like stuff to fans. So I would just like, I guess that was like kind of like me interning. I would help her after work, like ship stuff. She was the one, and she grew up with Jay and all of them, you know what I mean? So, her sister, I think, I can't remember what Dara's position was at Rockefeller, but her sister worked at Rockefeller, Rockefeller and it was on, they was on 29, and my floor that I ran was on the 20th floor. And that's how I got, like, familiarity, because my floor wasn't Rockefeller floor. But I would go up and down there all the time doing inter-office mail because um, on, the fan club was on the 20th floor. So she helped me a lot, you know what I mean? Because I used to tell her, like, yo, I remember one time I asked, I said, I said, yo, you think I could meet Jay Z one day and I could hang out with him for like an hour? And she was like, "No." <laughs> She's like, "You could meet him, but you ain't hanging out with him for an hour." And I was a kid, you know what I mean? And um, she helped me with my vision because I remember one time I said to 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 um Omi, she asked me about my friends, and I said, "I said it's like twenty. I said I had like twenty friends that I hung out with at this time." And I was like, "She said, what are they doing?" I was like, ten of them is like in jail, and like five of them is dead." Mm. And she was like, what? Like the same thing if a kid told you that today. You'd be mm -hmm. like, what the fuck? What you mean? Yeah. And she was, so I, I felt like she didn't feel compelled to help me, but she saw that I had some ambition. I feel like all of them seen ambition in me as a child. That's what made, help, help them, help me, help them, help me, hmm. if that makes sense. So even like still talking about like breaking into this, this music industry. I don't know how you it's, do it today. It, so, it sounds like a lot back then was like nepotism, like a lot of family and... I, yes and no because even for me it wasn't no nepotism. I'm not. I'm from Harlem. All mm. of them is from Brooklyn. I didn't know none of these people. So my personality is really what got me in the door, and my 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 um punctuality as far as time. Like if they told me like I like 
if I seen Omi, if I was going around the floor and I would get off at five o'clock, right? And Omi would be saying, Wayne, you think you can help me later? I'd be like, yup. I, I, I don't care what the fuck I had to go. I don't care, because at this, I still lived with my moms. You know what I'm saying? I was a teenager, so I still lived, lived at home with my moms. And at that time, like, I think my little sister was able to walk home from school. Yeah, because her school was across the street. So she was able to walk home. So I'm like, yeah, I'm staying. Like, whatever y'all need me to do. And even when I got the um, intern position, because this is another thing. I seen a lot, it's a lot of people. I'm not, don't get it twisted. It's a lot of motherfuckers that was in the same position as me that didn't go nearly a quarter where I went. Mm. But that's because a lot of people, like intern, a lot of the interns, they were relying on like their college education. Like, yo, I'll go to Howard and yeah, I'm interning here, but I'm going to be doing such and such next year and I'm going to get a job and, and come to find out that like academic education, education helps, but academic education has nothing to do with you. I'm a high school dropout. I'm, a, I'm an executive. I couldn't be an executive no, in no other company without a diploma. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't be an executive at Costco without a high school diploma. So like my m me being adamant, me being punctual, me being proactive and not reactive, like I'm not waiting for nobody to tell me what to do. I'm doing it. And I just ask for forgiveness after mm -hmm. if you don't like what I did. Well, so I was like, I just was, so the nepotism thing, I, I'm pretty sure it works because shit, my kids benefit off of what I do. Uh, but at the same time, it wasn't like they was hiring their children in there. It wasn't they, you know what I mean? Like only person that was, uh, um, Relative that I knew, I mean, Dame had a few of his people in there, like his brother, Bobby ran radio, Bobby Dash, shout out to Bobby Dash, he ran radio, um, Darian, Darian Dash, I think he ran finance, and I forgot, um, Carlton, um, he passed away, but he was running the finance division, like, he was the CFO of Rockefeller, Dame had his people on top of shit, but, you know, I ain't really see, I can't say I seen too much nepotism, and I was a kid, I was didn't really give a fuck about even business at that time. So I didn't care about what was going on. Yeah, so, right, so painting this picture, of course, we still talking about like this build up to getting on Everyday Struggle for my, because that was how I was introduced, right? Yeah. So we go from Rockefeller, 17, 18, 19, to this MySpace era, to this Twitter era. You was going into the Twitter era. How was you able to go from the MySpace, just writing your, your, your thoughts to your man telling you create Twitter and then it exploding? I don't, see, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know how people... So look, people would tell me, oh, you Wayne off of Twitter. Mm -hmm. But that's just... I, I use Twitter to kill time. So you don't recognize that though? You, you gotta at I, least I recognize, recognize it, it, but I didn't... That, that wasn't... Th this is what I'm saying. That didn't have... Me being on Twitter didn't have nothing to do with me being on Everyday Struggle. I'm gonna tell you what got me on Everyday Struggle. It wasn't Twitter. Twitter was just a pastime. Twitter did... I'm gonna tell you what Twitter did help me. In 2012, I had a job. I was working at Channel 11 in the mailroom. Again, after Rockefeller, when Dame and Jay broke the shit up, I was in the mailroom again, working at two different mailrooms, one for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals and another one for Pix11. Um, I still had, remember, I got all these relationships. I lived with Beanie Siegel. Mm. I, me and the Young Guns, we the same age, so we was all on the, everything that they was doing when they was getting their chains to doing their first music videos. I was around for all of that. So I had relationships with them and I had relationships with other people because of them. Um, in 2012, I said I, I, lost my, I, I lost my job and I was like, yo, I'm going to give myself some time to do something I want to do. So I was a brand ambassador for Reebok and um, that was paying me $1,000 a month. In 2012, I was 29, you know what I mean? I was making a thousand dollars a month for Reebok, and I was doing you know other little odd jobs to make money. I was in SOBs one time. I can't remember for who show, but I was backstage. I remember Lil Dirk being there, and this was like when Lil Dirk was first starting. He was running around with uh, slow bucks in them. You know what I mean? Because I got a great, I got a good relationship with Meek Mill because I, I met Meek Mill. I know Meek Mill since he was sixteen because of my ties to Philly. You know what I'm saying? This is crazy. Now I got a lot of I, this I, I, is crazy. So so um. Like I know, me, I know Meek before he caught the charge that kind of was the backdrop of his career. Yeah, you say you stand with Beanie, and but that's not. I met I met Meek from Oskino. Okay, you know what I mean. But but um, it's a lot of knowledge. This it's a is whole lot of crazy. shit. But when I was backstage at this show, I f I was talking to somebody. I don't know what the fuck I was talking about, but it was this dude named Pat Swiss. He was the booker for SOBs, and he was like, "Yo, what's your name?" And I was like, "Wayno," and he's like, he just was listening to me, and he's like. Yo, you got a Twitter? And I was like, yeah. So he goes on my Twitter. Like five or six minutes later, he came back. He's like, 
yo, I want you to host shows here. I was like, for what? He was like, because you got personality. I was like, personality? What the fuck? I, like, I could not grasp what personality meant, bro. Keep in mind... As, as intelligent as I am today, I am a high school dropout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's certain shit that just don't register to me. And, and I don't, I'm not saying that in a negative connotation. I'm just saying like when it comes to grammar, when it comes to certain things, it's just certain things didn't make sense to me. So a person telling me that I have a personality, that he wants to put me on a stage so I can um, host a show makes no fucking sense. I'm like, he said, I'll pay you. I said, how much you want to pay me? He said, on a good night, I pay you one fifty. On a bad night, fifty dollars. Mm. But it be it might be some nights where you ain't gonna get paid. I said, all right. I said, let me let, let me think about it. That night, I was I was leaving, and my man Low Key, you know Low, he do the show with Ebro mm -hmm. and Nadeska. Mm -hmm. We was on a train together. So I, and Low, he was hosting shows and shit. So I asked Low. I said, Yo, Low, they want me to host shows and and, and uh, SOBs. I was like. I don't know what to do though. I say you think I say you think I could do it. He's like, hell yeah, I think you could do it. He's like, but I'll teach you. He's like, if anything you want to learn, I'll teach you. I was like, for real? He's like, yeah. So he started telling me, I can't remember exactly what he said, but by the time I got off the train, I had an understanding of like what I had to do. I started hosting shows, right? So I'm hosting shows and shit. That was a direct connect to Twitter. But I started hosting shows. The first show I host was some, I can't remember. I remember the biggest show I hosted was Abso first show in New York, and he brought out Kendrick Lamar. And this was when Kendrick had, when Good Kid, Sid, Good Kid, Good, um, Good Kid Bad City just, just came out, Mad City just came out. And um, then I hosted some French Montana shows, and I hosted a few other shows. And I was just trying to do, bro, I had, at that time, I started a, a, a streetwear line. I was doing anything, my nigga, because I was trying to figure out Nigga, you about to have your third kid. You ain't got no fucking money. You live in a one bedroom apartment with your girl, how the fuck you gonna make something, like, nigga, you got to make something of yourself. So I'm doing everything, anything I could find, all types of whatever. And hosting those shows is how I meet Davies. Mm. And then once I meet Davies, I was hosting a show, it was a New Harlem showcase. Davies was on it. He rapped, and I always say this, it wasn't that East was better than everybody, it's just, his charisma on the stage, how, like he just had confidence that I hadn't seen from nobody else. Me and East get cool for like a year. And then I just approach him one day like, cause I, I, I was starting my management company. I approach him one day and I'm like, yo, I was telling everybody, like, yo, I don't really want to get that Dave East kid. So one day I called him, he was at somebody crib down a block from, from my mom's crib. I go over there and I see him and I'm like, yo, just talking to him, I'm like, yo, bro, like you doing all this yourself? He's like, yeah. I was like, could I help you with anything? He's like, hell yeah. He's like, I be needing help with shit. So I said, I said, who managed you? He's like, nobody. I said, I want to manage you. And he was like, you serious? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, I promise I'm a he said, he said, yeah, you can manage me. I said, I promise I'm gonna make you rich. When he said that, I didn't even know what the fuck I was gonna do to make him rich. I just said, I promise that I was gonna make him rich. You know what I mean? So I did, and, and what I did was when I got with East, I poured all of my resources from Rockefeller, from everybody I knew, from Rock, Rock. I'm, I knew DJ Drama, like I, like I said, I know Meek, I know a lot of people. Like don't get like I know a lot of people from, cause I don't have a bad name. I ain't never did nobody dirty. I ain't never stole from nobody. None of that shit. So it's like I always had a good name. So I poured my resources in the East. The way I got on Everyday Struggle was Nadeska was working for MTV. You remember when she was working for MTV? I don't. I don't. All right, no. she was working for MTV when she, they had Rap Fix Live. It was her, Rob Markman, Sway. And she was doing um, interviews, and she came uptown and interviewed East. And that's how I met Nadeska. And I kept in touch with Nadeska, like the same way how you kept in touch with me. I kept in touch with Nadeska. And when Everyday Struggle first started, I was a fan like everybody else watching. And then... That's 2017. In, 20, in, in 2017, the end of 2017, I stopped working with East. I started working with East in 2014. We stopped working together in 2017. And in January, here I am. Nigga, what the fuck are you going to do? Because now I done moved out the hood. My bills is different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I, don't, I live in a gated community now. I got more than one car. Got, and Deska calls me. And she's like, uh, no, I text her. Because she was on there with Star. Remember when they brought Star on? Mm -hmm. She's on there with Star. 
and I um I text her on some hunt star was having like a back and forth. And I text her, I said, Yeah, talk your shit. She hit me back two weeks later, she's like, yo, my fault, you know, she's like, my fault I ain't hit you back. Um, but yo, you should come on the show and debate with us one day. I was like, for real? And she like, yeah. So I'm like, all right. I went on that show that one time and I stayed for three years. Damn, bro, that's crazy. Like, yeah. that's wait, first of all, bro. it's a lot. No, 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 no. It's good though. No, no, no. It's fine. Know. We got time. I hope you got. I got Damn. time. Wait, 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 wait. Damn, hold up, bro. I got time. And I say it's it's intriguing to me because I don't, I told you a lot of my work ethic got me in a lot of these hip hop rooms. Yeah. So this is like I'm learning like so much shit. Yeah. Let's put a pause on this conversation. I'm gonna come right back. I promise. Yeah. You said you left Rock Nation because of Rockefeller. The, Rockefeller because of the J and Dash. I it's, didn't. I didn't leave. Not, you got like it's, yeah. It's, what, what, so when when J and Dame, I used to be around. I was with State Property a lot. Because like I said, like Beanie Siegel, like I, I became Muslim being around them because out of the seven members, six of them is Muslim. So I was around them a lot and um, they was around Dame a lot. Chris and Neef at the time, they was taking off, they was becoming stars and Jay had them around him a lot. But I used to be around Jay and them a lot too. And I used to be around like Jim a lot too because I'm from Harlem. So I used to be like, like Jim would tell you, like Jim, I've known Jim since I was 18. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, when it, I didn't know, nobody, I'm not going to say nobody knew. I say it might have been on a need to know basis and I wasn't at that level. But when it broke up, I didn't know. And I was working at Rockefeller and then I stopped, I got fired from Rockefeller <laughs> for some bullshit. But then I came back and when I came back, I was working with Beans and right when it broke up, Beans went to jail. So I'm in limbo. I don't, I didn't have, I wasn't on nobody's payroll. Like, Beans was paying me out his pocket. So now I got to figure it out again. Guess what I do? Go get me a regular job because now I got a kid. Mm. So now I got to go get me a regular job. So I used to be embarrassed to even tell people that I worked at Rockefeller because there was no inst it wasn't nothing to corroborate my story. You could just be another nigga just saying something and be like, that nigga's a liar. Yeah. They not never going to meet nobody from Rockefeller to verify it. So they like, I'm, at this time, bro, by the time I had to go get a regular job, I didn't fucking drink Cristal with Beyonce. I done been at Jay Z birthday parties. I done had been at dinner with all of them. I done been been with them when they got their first week sale. I done been with through a lot with them. So so now it's like I gotta go get a regular job. And when I got that regular job, it was like very humbling. So from your perspective, just curious because we, I have no clue. But from your perspective, being an inside man, I, of course you said it's underneath no basis. But just from your perspective. What, could you see that split coming? Like what? what now, was, in what? hindsight, 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 everybody's vision is twenty twenty. You can see clearer when you look back. What happened from your perspective? Uh, Jay was Jay Dame brought Cam and the men. Cam was doing his thing, which was you know as he should. There was a lot of friction because Harlem and Brooklyn. We just have friction. Okay. We just different with like people that's not from New York think that Brooklyn and Harlem is is two different worlds. And then, not to mention Southside Jamaica, Queens, where 50 Cent is from. That's a whole nother world. Then you, where Nas is from in Queensbridge is a whole nother world than Southside Jamaica, Queens, and it's all Queens. So, like, there's friction between, you know, artists on the label, and it didn't help when Joel said, shout out to Cam for taking over the rock and all of that shit. And Jay was, he was just going in a different direction. Dame was flipping on people and you know what I mean and they just was two totally different people and I think that Jay probably had enough of it mm. and, and when it ended it ain't like I, it ain't like they needed me like you know what I'm saying like they didn't need me so I just had to go with my life and you know what I mean I'm just curious cause like this is just this is nostalgic as fuck to me it's like yeah. I don't even know you the closest nigga I can even have this conversation about wait so wait I'm trying to understand how did that break the, the dame like was it amicably amicably I like, don't know bro I, like this is what I'm saying like you got to think about me being a kid from the hood, bro. I'm having the time of my life, bro. I'm talking about I'm having the time of my fucking life. I'm around people who I idolize over the first most important years of their career, which is a Jay-Z, a Beanie Siegel, a Memphis Bleak, a Cameron, a Joel Santana, a Young Guns, a Freeway. I'm around. I'm like, I'm not. This the thing. I'm not fake around. I'm talking about I'm right with them. Then I'm working on music with them. Now I'm learning how to be an AR. I'm around Lenny S, 
who, who people don't know is Kodak Lens on a gram. Mm. You know what I mean? Who Lenny S is... If you could go on a black on a black album documentary and see him saying, I'm turning this out. He's the AR. I'm around G. Robeson, who manages Nicki Minaj and Little Nas X now and all these other people. I'm around hip hop who has like Griselda and all you know, I'm a I'm right there with these people. So as a kid, my like the shit, remember when you I, you said when did I start realizing who I was when I said 27? All the shit I was around them for when I was 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and then I stopped being around around like 22, 23, up until tw when 27 hit, nigga, this light bulb went off in my head like, you know how to do all of this shit. Mm. And I was like, oh, I got to just do stuff for myself now. You know what I mean? Damn, bro. It's so it's like, you know, like I, I said, like even like I seen what you, like even with the Meek, like Meek, bro, Meek. The way I even met Meek was like Oskino. I I used to be around Oskino a lot, and Oskino, he used to um, he used to do a lot of shit in the street, bro. I mean, he'll tell you. And I used to be around him for it. It got to the point where it was so dangerous to be around him. He used to tell me, "I don't want you around me right now, because mm. I can't I can't call your mother and tell her something happened to you. I'm not doing that. So you got to stay away from me for right now." But O had got a crib in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And he called me one day and he was like, yo, I'm about to get this crib. He's like, I'm about to get this crib in Fort Lee. It's big and shit and I ain't gonna be there like that. You wanna live there? And I was like, yeah, I live there with you. So he's like, all right. So I go to, we go to, um, we on our way to Philly. We driving down to Philly. Just the, I was just, went, I went to the crib and then we driving down to Philly and he playing Meek Mill and Joey Jihad. He like, yo, these my young boys, like, they fire, da, da. He like, man, I, he's like, if I was in position, I would sign him, but I can't, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing. So he would play, so then, like I said, I had, like, my name wasn't there, but I still was way know that. You like, but like people knew who I was kind of, especially in Philly. So I remember him calling Joey like, yo, this my man Wayno. And I was like, yo, you fired, da, da. And then he called Meek, like, yo, this my man Wayno, da, da, he fuck with you. I'm like, yo, Meek, I fuck with you. And this, at this time, Meek like 16, I'm like 21, Meek like 16. Mm. And I used to see Meek all the time, like, bro, you in Philly, you see him riding a dirt bike up and down Broad Street all day. So then, like, I rem I can't remember the first time we met in person, but, like, I was around him then. And then, like, I remember, like, after he caught his case, when Charlie Mack was managing him, and then he got signed by T.I., I was around him then. And, you know what I mean? Like, one thing I could say is, like, he's always been, he's always supported anything I had going on. Because when I first started managing East, he did a song with East. You know what I mean? He knew that was my art. He did a song with East and all of that, like... He always been a person that like I got a tremendous amount of love and respect for. You know what yeah, I mean? This is crazy. I, I promise I'm gonna go back to uh nah, we go, everyday we struggle. About... But now I'm curious because now I'm just getting game. Again, back to the uh that statement I said, I'm gonna say this a lot. Mm -hmm. I feel like my work ethic got me in that room, in uh, the rooms. In these rooms. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I wish uh I had to sometimes I feel like I'm not really qualified to have these conversations because I, I kind of want to have the conversation from like a perspective what you have, but I don't have that knowledge. You what do you what mean you're not qualified? So, for example, if we talking hip hop, I really don't know about hip hop like that. You okay. know what I'm saying? Oh, I got yeah. a personality and yeah, I can, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it's like, I be looking at like Nori interview. I'm like, you can't, that's not, you gotta, you gotta go through some shit. Like, you gotta, you gotta go through the ground. Well, Nori, like, Nori shit is like, it's a lot of storytelling. Yeah, he been around. Yeah, But that's yeah. what I'm saying. You can't just arrive there. Like, you don't just, yeah, you can't no, that's work. A fact. You can't work and get, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta. Yeah, that's a fact. Like, you. That's why I say, not saying I'm not qualified. Mm -hmm. Nah, like, I, I feel like I'm that nigga. Ain't no imposter syndrome. It's just, yeah. I, I can't give you a story like Wayne No can give you. I can't give you a story like Nori would give you. That's what I mean by that. But you still have a story, though. So that's the thing, right? Like, it's like. Bro, when I got, like, to your point about what got you in the room, right? What got me, like, what, what got me in the room was my work ethic as well. Mm -hmm. And I was resourceful. I was very resourceful. Like, I'm talking about, like, you need something and can't figure it out, I get it. Mm -hmm. I find it. I didn't give a fuck what it was. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, I'm going to find it. And I've always been like that. And that's what's kept me, it's what's got me a career. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's levels. Like, at one point in time, I was resourceful for certain things. And as I got older, I became resourceful for other things. But like with the everyday struggle shit, when I first started doing it and I became the the co-host, bro, when I tell you I got hate, I got a lot of hate, bro. I got a lot of hate because niggas thought I landed on the earth that year. Mm. Like nobody knew nothing of what I went through. 
I'm talking about my music career prior to like me and Dave, uh, the Rockefeller shit, stuff in between, a lot of trials and tribulations of me trying to fail in. Like even, bro, even, yo, bro, this is what I'm saying. Even when it comes to the brand ambassador shit, you know, it was one of the first, not the first things, but as a brand ambassador, I remember, yo, it's this kid. He's about to do 106 in Park. Wayno, we need you to bring him a pair of sneakers. You know who that kid was? Travis Scott. Mm. Travis Scott had a Reebok deal. Before all the Nike, Jordan shit, he had a Reebok deal. I was coming to, I would, that, that's how I, I got a relationship with, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and act like me and Chase B is best friends, his DJ, but like me and Chase B, he, he sees me, he shows me tons of love. You know what I mean? Travis may not remember that, but like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's so many different things that I have been around and like, what I did was I always used one thing to leverage towards the next. So when I got on Everyday Struggle, I had like, what's the nigga name? Doggy Diamonds. He used to do a, a DVD or something. I can't remember his. I, I, and I'm mad that I can't remember it because I'm not saying Doggy Diamonds name to diss him. Because I liked his his stuff that he used to do. He used to do a DVD that was that was pretty dope in the DVD days. I remember he went on like this Twitter rant like, who the fuck is this nigga? He ain't qualified to do this shit. Who, who, y'all niggas don't know what y'all doing. He's supposed to, Joe, like you go from Joe Button to him. And and honestly, let's keep it 100. What if I had since, what if, what if I had self-esteem issues? Now, let me tell you something. I'm going to keep it 100. You know what gets me through? Nigga, all this music industry shit is easy, nigga. You ever ate ravioli for dinner? No. Nah, three days a week? No, nah, for real. This fucking shit ain't nothing. So a nigga saying something ain't nothing, bro. I done had niggas stick razors in my face and say, say another word, I'm going to open your face up. You think I give a fuck about what a nigga going to say about me on social media? I done had problems with people, all types of shit that people have no idea about. And that's what I'm saying. Like when I got on Everyday Struggle, people thought I landed on the earth that year. So I dealt with like, I'm not a journalist. I would never proclaim to be a journalist. I never tried to act like I'm a journalist. I never said I'm a journalist. But now that this is my thing, I had to learn. And a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't allow me the grace to learn. They just like, it should be me. Hmm. Why him? Fuck he did. I did a lot of shit. But I feel like you would be one of the people that I would deem as qualified to have those conversations because you've been around. I mean, yes and no, depending on who you ask. But like for me, like, yo, bro, I'm going to keep it 100, bro. Every time I get paid for talking, bro, let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> I didn't have jobs, my nigga. Well, I was making $9 an hour. I didn't had weed that I couldn't sell. <laughs> like, because it was bad. I didn't, I didn't fucking... I've been through a lot of things in my life. I failed tremendously. When they told me I could talk and get paid, nigga, yeah, y'all gonna have to pay me to shut up. Yeah, it's different. Bro, when I, I feel like it's hot... I used to feel like... It, when I used to... Bro, when I first got a check from that shit... I made more money doing everyday struggle than I did anything else that I had did prior to that. And me and Dave East made some fucking money. Mm. We made some real money. Not no play shit. We made some real money. I made more money doing that. So I wasn't getting, you know, I give a fuck about what a nigga got to say when I'm getting paid and my kids is good, my family is straight. I could help my moms. You know what I mean? I could do for my loved ones. I give a fuck about what a nigga say. So all of that, what a nigga qualified for in it, Guess what, bro? It's like Goldie said in the Mac. Your bitch chose me. <laughs> like, what, like, what you want me to do? You know what I mean? Ain't nothing. I could do about it. That's that's her decision. I look at that metaphorically. Mm. They chose me for that shit. You feel me? And it was what it was. We, I did that shit for three years, and then I, after that, I segued. What can I do? I segued that into Amazon Music, and got to deal with them. So let me ask you this, just from your experience now. Then I guess you you've been in in it now. You mm -hmm. said you fell into this media shit, but. You having so much knowledge and you having all these stories and like you're like a hip hop historian at this point. I guess. Nigga, ain't no I guess. Bro, I don't care. Like, I'm not gonna say not I saying don't I, care, you, bro. But it don't matter if you care, you gotta acknowledge it though. You got you just gave me stories about Rockefeller when when Jay-Z and Dame that like bro, you just, I was in there with Chris. See, because like, I, all right, look, look, look. Like, I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, you know why I'm like that? Because you was there, nigga. Cause you was nah, there. Bro, it is cause I was there, but like you ever seen when Mike Tyson was like, they was like, yo, look at this belt. Look at this. Look at them gloves. And shit don't mean nothing. That shit don't mean nothing, bro. And I'm not saying that to diminish my accomplishments because I have a ton of accomplishments. But, bro, remember I was saying when we first started, 
So I think I said it off camera. The older I get, the more I realize I don't know shit. Yeah, for sure. The older I get, I realize that like all these accolades, all of these, the VP at this or the this or the that or that, that shit don't mean to me what everything that I got that didn't cost me a dime mean to me. It don't, you know what I'm saying? So that's my perspective. It's certain people that's in it for the vanity and it's certain people that's in it for the accolades. Guess what, bro? I got used to not getting... When I was a kid in, in elementary school, every time I wanted to be in a play, I never got a part I wanted. So I got comfortable with not with, 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 saying, with getting no's. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Every time I tried out for a basketball team, I never made it. Except for like maybe one or two, not the ones I really wanted to be on. So I got comfortable with that shit. So all of that shit... That niggas live by and like, and I, I'm not mad at nobody competing or being at they level. And yeah, I did this and I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. You wanna know why? Because I have my respect for myself. I got money. You feel me? That's what I care about. I, I get I get to it so I can help. I, bro, I'm right now I'm thinking about my grandkids. I ain't got no fucking grandkids. You feel me? That's mm-hmm. where my mind is at. What the fuck about all that other. You did this, you did that. So what? That shit over. What no, I'm mean, gonna do next? I get you know that. I mean? I'm not trying to. No, 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 no. You're right. I'm, you know what I mean? Like when people ask me, I tell, I say the same thing. I get that. Like it ain't really about. It's about. I tell people all the time. Who I am is is the person that you don't see on camera. Like that's yeah. who I am as a person. That's what means something. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But far as the conversation, I'm saying we can't just ignore it. Right? No, 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 no. So I'm that nigga. Let, 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 I'm gonna keep it a band. I'm that nigga. All right. You know what I mean? I, I know that. But at the same time, I don't like. I don't wear a I'm that nigga sweatsuit. No, nah, facts. You feel me? Like, like it's, it's mad shit I've done. That might sell good, though. <laughs> it, it might, you know what I mean? But That might sell it, good. It might. Man, do it. You know what I mean? You heard? <laughs> but, like, but, do that but, shit, no, no. Right? but let me ask you, though. No, yeah. no, no cap. So, you being like having so many stories in hip-hop, understanding, being there in hip-hop, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm curious to hear your uh, perspective on this. When it comes to journalism and all these podcasts, people doing interviews, do you think it's a better interview when somebody is qualified, having all the knowledge about hip hop, speaking on hip hop, or the fun stuff that we see, like uh, it depends. So, so like, all right, yes, it, it it depends because times change, right? Like, it used to be a time where, like, when a journalist had to do something with a um a personality or artist, whatever, it used to be in times where, like, um, how can I say, when a person had to write. You know what I mean? They had to write it for a write-up or something. Or even, you know, conducting interviews in front of... There's certain shit I like. Like, all right, everybody be mad at the, the Kai nigga, right? Kai Sana, yeah. I love... You know why I love that kid and all of his homies? is because had I been afforded the opportunity to have this type of technology, me and my friends would have been dancing on camera, having fun. Me and my friends would have been playing video games. You know what I'm saying? Me and my friends would have been having a bunch of girls over and laughing and joking with them. And the what Kai, who the fuck, Kai ain't never say he was trying to be a journalist. Mm. When Nicki Minaj go on his shit, that's not journal. It, it, I'm when I say it's not journalism, it's because I, I don't mean I'm not trying to discount. I'm saying like that's not what he want them there for. He there for you to come chill with him and have a good time. He not like Kai knows that you're not trying to have you sit down and do the the greatest interview where he deep dives and goes back into your history and brings it to the forefront and then segues away from it. That's not what he do. He a young nigga having fun. So, like, I do appreciate interviews that that um do provide that as well, though, too. But that's not what them young niggas is after. And, and, that, and that, that's that's the thing. We be forgetting when I be seeing these niggas say this down the third. We be forget. Don't forget you was that age, bro. Mm-hmm. Don't forget how people treated you when you was 21. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget how people treated you when you was when when you wanted to wear something that every, that niggas ain't agree with. You know what I mean? And and they was joking on you for it. You know what I'm saying? Or saying, why are you wearing that jersey? We don't rock with that team. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's different levels, but the same shit ex- has existed in almost every era or every generation, where there's a disconnect between the elders and the youth. And the elders and the youth disconnection, that shit just comes in because some niggas be looking and be hating, bro. Mm-hmm. Some niggas is just haters. You feel mm-hmm. me? I, uh, me personally, I understand why an uh, artist wouldn't want to do a, an interview like this or an interview with like a high level journalist because sometimes your agenda be different. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes when you want to sit down with a funny marker or a Bobby or a Cosinette, yeah. you just have fun. Like, you don't have to worry yeah. Like you say, nobody trying to deep dive into my life. Yeah. Then you deep dive into my life. Somebody else might get, take what I said. But, as but wrong. some people do like that too. 
Like, bro, the first interview I ever did ever was uh, by myself. Not every day, because I did a bunch of shit on Everyday Struggle. First interview I ever did by myself was Gunna. And I remember this is when he dropped the album Gunna Season. Not Is it Gunna? What's the shit with the astrology shit? Yeah. It's not your, I don't think that's your, I, I can't, I'm, forgive me, I can't remember exactly what it was. But, like, I had this, and when I did that interview, I remember calling my man Daytuan. You know what I mean? Daytuan, he ran Vibe, he ran King Magazine. He's, like, high level with that shit. And I called Daytuan, and I was like, yo, bro, I'm kind of nervous. I'm doing this by myself. Like, usually I used to have academics to lean on. Like, academics are coming with the quirky, funny shit or some controversial shit. They be not fucking with him for that. I come in with some, you know, straight question or some real life shit. And then Desco would even us out. I'm doing this by myself. So I, I he like, yo, just make him comfortable. He's like, once you make him comfortable, he going like, to give you whatever you need in an interview. And, um... Yo, bro, I was calling people in Atlanta, finding out information on him. And by the time it was done, I remember calling my homegirl, Eb, his manager. And she was like, yo, Gunner was like, yo, that was like one of the best interviews he had. And I did one of those type of deep dive interviews. Because mm -hmm. that's another thing. I know that my age, like I said, while I do admire and I love what Kai and them, them niggas is doing, I'm not, I can't do what they do. And I'm not trying to do what they do because they got their own lane. You feel me? So, And this is before they was even popping like that. So it's like for me... I always tried to have my interviews in a space of like we could talk some fun shit. We could talk. I'm a I'm a father, you know what I mean. So we could talk some family shit. I come from the street, so we could talk about not. I don't I don't get into niggas, you know what I mean. The talk, telling and because that's that's a very very slippery slope. And I feel like when you decide as a personality which side you want to stand on in that conversation, then you have to live in that. And I I got a lot. I I I got people on JPay right now. I ain't got time to be. I'm worried about that. I ain't worried about what you got going on. Mm -hmm. So I try to stay within a conversation where you could come fuck with Wayne or you gonna you gonna be you you gonna feel good walking away like yo he ain't try to violate you know what I mean he had fun you know what I mean but it wasn't too off the wall like that type shit you feel me? You think that old school journalism stuff is like dying? I wouldn't necessarily say dying because guess what? There's an audience for everybody. Like why while like let's say that's what I learned, bro. Like. If there's a, a hundred thousand views or a million views, does not mean a million people, mm. right? But if there's a hundred thousand views, it might be a bunch of people that may not see it, but the people I want to see it might see that, and that's what they might like. So, like, it, it, I'm not gonna say it's dying because yes, it, a lot of things is numbers games now more than ever, and. I wouldn't say it's dying, but like just stay in your lane, bro. Mm. Stay in your fucking lane. Like, you know, like even with the Drake shit. Like, remember when Drake did the Bobby shit? Like, I I, I ain't gonna lie, I think the Bobby shit was ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, Drake, it ain't like Drake ain't come talk to all of y'all already. But I understood when he I I that's why I said I can't understand why artists would do the Bobby, bro. It's like you're not about to go to a deep dive in my every life. single time. Yeah, so it's every like, single time. Let's do have fun. Yeah. I, Artists sometimes be like, bro, I don't want... Like, because you come to the interview with me, I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm yeah. doing my research. I'm asking you questions. Right. I can understand. I can see. I can understand why artists wouldn't want to do that. I yeah, can understand. Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, I just want to have fun. Every, every time, though. Because you don't know... Like, that's the thing. Every, I've been I've been with the artists the day when they having a bad day and then got to go to... Excuse me. Go to the radio and act like it's a good day. Mm. And sometimes they just don't... And now we're in a place where... I'm not going to say it don't matter, but they've shifted. People still go to radio and do interviews all the time. But it's shifted, right? Like the consumer has shifted. Now, like I did just think about, bro, when I was a little kid, if I missed the fucking X-Men cartoon, there was no reruns. I had to wait till the fucking summertime when they doing reruns to watch an episode I missed three months ago. Now everything is on demand. I could go, I could watch my favorite episode or whatever every day, all day. So you gotta let the consumer decide. Mm. But if you doing something and you feel like, all right, it's the highest level of integrity and it got to be this, that, that's fine. Do that. Do it with the people that want to do that with you. Facts. That's Damn. just that. If niggas don't want to do that shit with you, so what? Like, no, that makes sense. I mean, yo, how you feel about this? I feel like there's been a lot of Drake slander recently. Yeah. Would you, would, you very much hip hop. Would you say Drake is hip hop? Absolutely. How is he not? I, yo, bro, I, I promise you, you know what? I'm, I'm telling you, bro. I kid you not, bro. Because this me and Drake's like media to artist relationship has been kind of like funny in a sense. Like it was one time Drake called me a nerd on Instagram. You know what I mean? Because that because that nigga it, gonna respond. If he gonna do anything. He gonna he see the fuck is going on. It, it, I'm gonna tell you, but the, the reason why because he it was like he did the basketball tournament shit at the crib, and he won the championship. I was like, of course he won the championship. It's in his crib, right? 
So he wrote some little funny message. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I had OVO kids in my DMs for like <laughs> two months after that. But um, one thing I do, like when it comes to Drake, is like Drake has rapped on a bunch of songs. He sang on just as many, if not more. Now, when Drake did Forever, back when he did Forever with M, Wayne, um, Kanye, you know what I mean? When he did uh, the Fair song, when he came out with Best I Ever Had, when he came out with... Oh, nobody was having this debate about... Nobody not going to tell me started from the bottom ain't hip-hop. Mm. Nobody going to tell me worst behavior, not hip-hop. Nobody going... Like, now... He's some shit that we've never seen before. That's the the thing about him is he's something we've never seen before. He's doing shit that a lot of our favorites have never done, but a lot of the shit that he's doing didn't matter to us at that time. Like I didn't when I was a kid, I didn't give a fuck about how many Billboard entries you had. Are you nice or are you not? Mm -hmm. Nobody not gonna say the nigga not nice. Now, if your taste level is that of a uh, uh, black thought. When it comes to hip hop rapping skill set wise, you might think Drake is trash, but I don't think Drake is trash. I don't think he can't rap. I think he is a rapper, but him doing the 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 singing shit. You know what I really when he made that fucking. You know what it told me when he did that fucking. What's that album? That house music album. I, honestly, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what that told me? That he was bored because it wasn't nobody to compete with him. Mm. That's what it told me, bro. That look. Let me put some context behind that. Uh, Drake, Kendra Cole, Drake, Kendra Cole, Drake, Kendra Cole. They've been running that in the ground forever. Drake, Kendra Cole, Drake, Kendra Cole, Drake, Kendra Cole. Kendrick is I, I favor Kendrick's music over Drake's to an extent. It's certain shit that Drake got that I love more than Kendrick, and it's certain shit that Kendrick got over Drake that I love more than Drake. Cole, Cole as well, right? But being consistent. And 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 come and going back to back, I'm a Jay Z fan. Mm. Jay, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, eight years straight albums, consistency. Then he gives you Rockefeller and all the artists and all that other shit consistently, right? So Kendrick, as much as I love him as an artist, because I don't know him, he's not as consistent. I'm not going to say, no, he's consistent. Because every time he drops something, it's that shit. But it doesn't come as frequent. Mm -hmm. So that used to be the debate between like the Nas shit with Jay. Because Nas would take time off, but Jay would keep going. You know what I'm saying? Then Nas would come back and people were like, oh, that shit ain't fucking with Jay shit. So it's like, I can't knock a nigga for being as consistent as he's been. And not only having the notoriety and the fame. Now... When it comes to how he dressed and all that other shit, that's a whole nother convo. You feel me? But as far as an artist, we come on, bro. How are we gonna say that's not hip hop? I, you know, it's funny when you talk about honestly. Never mind. I personally think that's just Drake's DNA. And what I mean by that is, some people say Drake is uh, a culture vulture. I don't think so. I just think he's multi. You want to know why, bro? Because he's from can Canada, bro. If that yo, bro, it's because the niggas from Canada. My fault. Government. No, you're good. No, I, basically, that's bro, what it's because he's from Canada. Canada. Canada has a, a a range of people there. Diverse. No, no, I'm no? saying I'm saying that why people don't take it serious. Oh. Like, think about this, right? Like, no bullshit. You from Baltimore, bro? Mm -hmm. If you was beefing with a nigga right now, and a nigga said, "Nigga, I'm from Canada," da 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 da. You out? You been you been in Toronto before? Not yet. No. All right, you haven't been there before, right? So, I just know the mentality of Americans and how we are, whatever. You will let niggas back. Hey, I ain't them niggas is from Canada. Them niggas not. There's goons up there too. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is like the the mentality. Nigga, we said that about Connecticut, and the Connecticut is the hood. I didn't even know hood. that. I didn't even know the that. Nigga, we be you like, ever nigga been from Connecticut. Connecticut, Patterson, New Jersey, bro. That shit look like Cincinnati mm. on on first forty eight. Now this this one I'm trying to tell you, bro. Like, I, I said that on Twitter. Geographics play a big part into how people perceive you. I said if Drake was from the Bronx. That your they crown this nigga over Biggie, everybody. You know a nigga started, if he was from the Bronx, he wouldn't sound like that. We know I'm saying a hypothetical, and I, I ain't gonna front. I hate fantasy shit, but at the same time, let's be for real, bro. If Drake was from Harlem, bro, you know how many niggas from Harlem be wild. You couldn't say nothing about Drake if that nigga was from Harlem. Mm. If he was from New York, the thing is, is because he's a Canadian, 
And niggas look at, like, yeah, his background, because he played, like, a soft character with the wheelchair, Jimmy shit, and all that, and we first came out. Now, don't don't get me wrong, and this is something that I had controversy, like, not when it's necessarily controversy, but when he made Tusi Slide, I was kind of thrown off, because I'm like, oh, the, the gangster shit is kind of a lot for me, you feel me? Because because when he first came out, I accept you how I met you, so when he first came out, he was saying, like, he, I remember him saying, like, oh, Wayne and them do that, like, I'm not somebody who do that, but rapping-wise... How many niggas do what they say for real? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The one, the most of the ones that do what they say don't even make it that far. Yeah. That's so right. from an entertainment standpoint, I do get it, but at the same time, bro, we not we gonna say that this nigga not hip hop, bro. No, nah, that's why I said I think honestly, never mind was more so on his DNA because he he's showing his versatility. <laughs> I feel like he he's always showing his versatility. Though. I know, but he's people, bro. I'm, people call him a, a culture vulture for a reason. Now I don't call, they call him because he's because he's from bro. Because I'm telling but, you, because he's versatile though. He he can do some. He can do some drill shit. He can do some uh some uh Caribbean shit. Like he's versatile. That's like, all right, you know what's crazy? Me and my man, me and my man was having the same conversation today, and we brought up a boogie, and I said, yo, they don't give. I said, a boogie, after in the past like five to ten years, after a, like a Nicki Minaj and a Cardi B, a boogie is the most successful artist from New York, and I don't hear niggas never bringing him up as far as his credit. Or what he deserves as far as like what he's done. A Boogie could go do a stadium in, well, let me not, stadium would be the, where the Ravens play. I'm not going to say stadium. I say an arena. He can do an arena in Baltimore. He could do an arena in Kentucky. He could do an arena in Oklahoma City. He could do an arena. He, he sold out the Barclays like two days in a row. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm saying. Like, see, the problem with being from New York is we never count our wins. We never count our wins. Now, I now a person to say, yeah, but that nigga be singing. They'll probably say the same shit. He be singing. So fucking what? So what? Queen Latifah used to sing. <laughs> and she used to rap about guns and what was going on in the hood. Just another day. You know what I mean? Riding around riding around in the hood. Yo, now it's not hip. It's just... Because cause this, this be the, it be the schematics of it, right? Because then it's like, all right. So the only thing that's considered hip hop, it got to be like MF Doom. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which that's hip hop. Yeah, that's but crazy. that's like I wish a person would tell me Tyler Creator ain't hip hop. I wish a nigga would, bro. A nigga who do his beat and he be singing too. He be singing too. Nigga can't. It's cause the niggas from Canada, bro. I promise mm. you. That's, that's crazy that, that when you said Tyler the Creator, I instantly thought of like a Russ almost because like he does everything. Russ is hip hop. I fuck with Russ. Do you think Russ is hip hop? I think so. Exactly. Very much so. All right, so I, but I think Drake is hip hop though. All right, cool. Yeah, hey, I mean, I, I right, think right. I, I don't because because no, shout out to Russ because I fuck with Russ. Yeah, you know what I mean. But that but, nigga is savage. No, nah, it's a fact. Like, yeah, I, I would never say Drake not hip hop. Yeah, I, I think he's, I think he's so much hip hop that he's. This is gonna sound crazy. I think he's almost beyond hip hop, and it's hard for us to accept it. Like he's doing things that the Beatles did. We ain't never seen nobody do that. But you talking about sales? Well, we never seen this before. I know, but I'm but see, but see, that's the thing. So that that's the part where it's like. I don't really now look accolades. Remember, I'm not the fucking accolade guy. Which I got, some, I got some, I got some good plaques. Like you know what I mean. I just was telling my my, my partner Brandra, I'm like, yo, I might need to put my plaques up and stun on niggas right quick. I got some plaques, but at the same time, it's like I'm more so about like the music, how good you is. You know what I'm saying? Because when well, he I can was spar with the best of them too, though. That's what I'm saying though. But but so he's a let, version let, of hip hop we've never seen before. I, I'm gonna tell you. Another thing is too when it comes, bro. People gotta stop playing with Lil Wayne, bro. I hate the way how Lil Wayne is treated when it comes to hip hop, bro. Wait, what? Yeah. Who? Nobody. General. No, nah, I'm telling you, bro. I, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna give you a perfect analogy. You love? You watch basketball? A little bit, not really. I'm not okay. a basketball fan. I mean, you. All right, so let's. I, I'm the room. You you watch basketball? You watch basketball? All right, cool. Listen, Kobe Bryant. When it comes to conversation about who's the best, they be trying to they erase skip him. They be trying to skip Kobe like he never. But they say that because they he, they remind Kobe remind niggas of Jordan so much. I, I, I don't give a fuck. Kobe won five championships and he won two without Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> five of them things. Yeah, and he won two without Shaquille O'Neal. That's my goal in my perspective. Uh, okay, so so look, well Wayne, Wayne is another nigga that's been good forever. Nobody never denounces. I think Kobe but, get disrespected more than Wayne e easily. I, nah, easy. I, I feel like the I feel like it's it's, it's, no it's way. mutual, bro. I'm Hell for real, bro. Because no. niggas don't be like when you bring up little Wayne. You know what I hate? When about, people say top five rappers, Wayne always. No, in listen. A, you in know a, what I hate about like again the hip hop culture? Like 
niggas will reduce you to the moment they didn't like it. Like, it'd be like, yo, Wayne one of the best. That nigga made Lollipop. Ain't no nigga that made Lollipop, Lollipop could be the best. That nigga made How to Love. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, so we go in the gate. All the shit this nigga Wayne, like, what, bro. That was a very bad time. What? Not bad time. How was the a, nigga sold was, a, nah, look, look, look. It was really he just, sold a million physical copies the first week. How was yeah, that a bad that was, time? Not, I'm saying, like, far as trying to point to his career. Like, I, I, I just wouldn't say, say I just that. think that, like, bro, like, people. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go to Lollipop because he did so much. Yeah, guess what, though? And this, this, but this is what I'm saying, bro. The same niggas that say that, bro. Now, I'm I'm not a club subscriber. They don't play that in the club. I'm, I hate that shit. I, I hate that shit. But a club isn't technically hip hop. The club is hip hop. The club is very well, much so. Playing no, you, wait, you ain't wait, playing wait. no black thought in the club. The, but why is only black? So only black thought no, is hip hop. No, no, no. I'm saying the, when we talk about the hip hop heads. Nah, but this is what I'm saying. I'm not fuck them niggas. Them, but that's them, what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm saying I'm technically about, you can't say Drake not hip hop because cl- technically the music Wayne, y'all say. Yeah, but what I'm saying is Wayne, right? Like hip hop. The club is a part of hip hop culture because. Hip hop culture was big in the 80s and 90s because niggas would go to the club and dance at the club. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They would dance to the music. So what I'm saying is, is the nigga that's the biggest hip hop head on the planet that got all types of shit on their wall and posters and all that, bro, you go to Onyx, you do not want to hear Inspect the Deck. You know what I mean? But you that's, not I, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm you want to hear Lollipop by Wayne. That's what that's I'm saying. That's a part of hip hop. Okay, okay, okay. That's a part of hip hop. Let's keep it a band. You feel okay. me? So I just be saying like niggas always try to reduce it and, and my and because I you know I know we got more. We still got time. Yeah. All right. Uh, so <laughs> y'all, well, y'all need a break. Y'all want to switch? I know you probably tired. All right, wait, we got. Time. All right. Um, like like what um, what I was gonna say. Damn. All right, like. Damn, I forgot what I was going to say. Take your time, because I got more questions, nigga. Nah, go ahead. Let's, let's, let's go ahead. Let's Yo, go ahead. all right, so, all right, all right, hold up. Let's go back. Let's go back. Damn, we, this shit, fire. Going back to the everyday struggle shit. Yeah. Know. Was it? Here come the what, academics questions. Not even yet. <laughs> Damn, not even yet. Nah, nah. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, was it hard? What, what, did you try to trick yourself out of intentionally trying to be like a Joe or like was you trying to do I, things I, intentional not to be like I can't be I'm not listen I can never why all right bro how could I trick myself out of not being a nigga when I've been myself my whole life no I say that because it's like they they pretty big shoes to fill well, I don't give a fuck about filling the nigga shoes I'm here what so this is the thing right? not even subconsciously you want you bro why listen let me tell you something I have a I have a I have a good relationship with Joe Right? We we very cordial. I have a good relationship with Joe or whatever. Right? Joe Button is a nigga who was a rapper. He was a rapper. His per- When you say rapper, his perspective about everything is totally different than mine. I never was a rapper ever in my life. Mm. So how could I d- not try to be like... Then, now, don't get me wrong. I'm very argumentative. You know what I mean? I'm very argumentative. But I'm also... Remember what I said about the youth? Bro, like at that time, like Joe's shit was like. Remember, I right, remember the, the him and Yachty episode. Like mm-hmm. every time it was somebody young, yeah, it was an issue. He's like hating on them niggas, man. Bro, so look, I like I, I like I I be working with I work at QC. I'm with Yachty. I was with Yachty yesterday, right? When I met I met Yachty when Dave did the the double XL freshman cover. From the moment I met Yachty, before I bro, when I met Yachty, I didn't see no QC in my future. From the moment I met Yachty at the Double XL Freshman Show, and Dave and him used to have like a lot of the same shows because at that time people would do like Double XL Freshman shows. We would be there, Yachty. I always had a respect for him, and I remember the first time I ever seen him perform, and I was like, "Wow, this nigga got something." You feel me? Whether whether it's not, I grew up on the locks. It ain't the locks. He ain't trying to be no fucking locks. That's not the only thing that niggas could do musically is rap hard in that sense. I never would, I never tried to shit on no young niggas for them being young and me not understanding exactly what they did. Now, whether people think Joe did that or not, we're different in that space. Remember, when Joe's calling a nigga whack, keep in mind that he's a rapper. So he knows, like, I, I wasn't a big fan of Joe's music, but he could rap better than a lot of people. Yeah, he Even today, better. if he had to, if Joe had to write a, a verse right now, he could out rap. 80% of niggas that rap every day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 85 shit. My perspective is different. So my perspective on coming on everyday struggle was this. I'm a nigga who come from 
a neighborhood where there ain't much to look forward to when you walk out the door. Everybody's trying to figure it out, right? As much as I dibbled and dabbled in the street, I have no felonies. I have friends who are some of the best people in the world and some of the worst people in the world. I have um, perspective because I love sports. I love video games. I love sne- this. Me being on being on everyday struggle was me being myself. Mm. I couldn't. I, how could I be Joe? How? How? It's impossible for me to be Joe. Yeah. Impossible, bro. I, and I'm not never being no other nigga. You heard? I could just see a nigga trying. Not no, not trying to be him. I could yeah. just see somebody trying to be. Be trying to work so hard not to be looked at as a replacement or the furthest thing away from him. That's nah. I mean, I didn't. I didn't see. That's the thing, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. I got everyday struggle at a time in my life where I was trying to. I needed some bread. I not give a fuck about with none. Nobody, <laughs> bro. You think I give a fuck? I'm getting paid, bro. These niggas are saying I'm wake up. Wait, how much the check, bro? Come on. Tell I'm me. not telling you nobody. Might, that's his nah, own. I'm not telling. That's not nobody business. That's Niggas not nobody's ask, business. How, what was your first big check all the time? You could yeah, say, I could say my first big check, but I'm not gonna say my everyday struggle check was. My first big check that I got individually was we don't care about forty, that. and then the next one was like one twenty. We don't care about that. I'm not talking about my everyday struggle checks. <laughs> complex, <laughs> complex paid me very well. <laughs> Let's just say that complex paid me very, very well. I made a lot of money with complex. You know what I'm saying? I made a lot of money, and even after, even after everyday struggle, I've done stuff with complex. You know what I mean? But um. You yeah, really man, I plug. couldn't. You really the plug, bro. I ain't no plug, bro. Like, you the plug. I ain't no you plug. You need an intern? Huh? You need an intern? Yeah, hell yeah, I need interns. Yeah, I'll be an intern quick, I need bro. you. To, I need you to help me with shit. What you talking about? Shit, I'll you help you, nigga, for the free. Listen, I'm going to show these young niggas how to do it. Nah, in fact. I'm going to show nah, niggas bro, how to do it. I made some good paper and all that, but Complex, was, they was good to me, man. I mean, like, the thing about getting on, getting on, um, what's crazy was a lot of me and academic shit, like, his personality, we are opposite in how we view things and how we uh, interpret certain things. But Act knows a lot more about music than people know he does. Mm. And Act is very, very intelligent in how he moves and all that. And, like, I got a lot of game from him being on there. Bro, he helped me. Like, he helped me negotiate. He helped me go back to my lawyer when it was time for me to do my Amazon shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I told him, I'm like, yo, I got this situation. He's like, yo, do this. Ask for this. You know what I mean? Like, he, he, and he's not a hoarder of information. That's the big, let me tell you something. Fuck music, entertainment, whatever. In life, the worst niggas you could ever deal with is the niggas that hold the information, bro. Mm. Don't never let it, if a nigga tell you, yo, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you, you doing your thing. I fucks with you. Anything you need. And you ask a nigga about some information and the nigga don't give you, he don't fuck with you, bro. Mm. Straight up, one thing I can say is academics never held, held no information from me. Never held no information from you me. You think that was the the biggest thing you learned from him about far as just the information how the Amazon shit? Nah, he taught me how to be a personality too. He taught he taught me how to be a personality. Like he he taught because I didn't, bro. Let me tell you something. I did not know. I didn't know that what we was doing was like I, this. Is gonna sound crazy, bro. But I, you see how I'm. I, a lot of shit I say, I speak about it like I'm oblivious. To a, a uh, um, certain degree, I didn't look at what we was doing as like this entertaining thing for other people. When I came there, it was like for me to do what I had to do, for us to talk. I didn't look at it like, oh, not nah, today. I'm gonna like wild out so that we could get the views up. Like I, I never looked at it like that. You know what I'm saying? And I remember one time, like we had this, like it was a joke. He was like, he said, Wayne, well, you know, I ain't gonna lie, my nigga. He said, you too real, my nigga. You gotta cry, bro. He like, you gotta fucking cry, bro. He like, we gotta be talking about some real shit. And you just got, he said, you ain't gotta boo-hoo. Just one tear. He like, just let one tear drop. He like, yo, bro, you let one tear drop on camera, nigga. We, we out of here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, it's crazy. Because I think, I, res- I, I respect uh, academic. And um, I mean, of course, the woman shit, he, he, he can relax. He could dumb down on that a little bit. But far as everything else, I'd look at him like... Like I look at myself, I'm. I got a perspective on that too. What you mean? With, what? The, with women shit. What's your perspective? What? Keep saying what you're saying, and I'm I mean, gonna tell you. I let you get your shit off. No, I'm not I, trying I'm to a get my shit off. I'm just trying to tell you, like I'm, I'm a. I'm just a great listener. So, so not just, not just, no, for real, not just no. Beyond academics, right? When female artists talk about being artists, and they say, "I don't want to be put in a box as a female artist. I want to be judged as an artist," right? Mm-hmm. When you judge them as an artist, and it's not 
to their liking, a lot of times, you a hater. Mm -hmm. Now, when you judge a nigga, it's just... No, you still a hater. It's not, no, it's not always a Niggas hater. Still, you still in hell. To, to a certain group of people. What I'm saying then is this, right? I remember you one time. You can't criticize wait, me, nobody nowadays. Me, you can't criticize nobody. But let me give you an example. I remember when Meg Thee Stallion came out with that song where she was talking about like the Tory shit and she rapped over Who Shot You, right? Mm -hmm. The Biggie Who Shot You beat. And I tweeted, I was like, I was like, why? I was like, why would she rap over Who Shot You? Like, you know what I mean? You know what I was immediately greeted with? If you hate black women, just say that. Your mother probably never loved you. You probably, it's probably bitches you wanted to, I'm like, cause, because I think it was a bad decision to rap on that beat. I'm like, so, so what I'm saying is, is this, right? Now, female rapper or not, if, if, if you're a female rapper and you want to, and, and I think, oh, I ain't, so I do this thing on my Twitch called You Will Be Judged. I used to do it on my IG. I don't give a fuck who you is. You could, if you, if you come up there and I, and, and you, we play your music. And we think that shit is trash, we letting you know immediately. I don't give a fuck if it's your birthday. <laughs> you just came from your mom's funeral. Yo, you, like, I don't savage. care what's... No, nah, on some G shit. Because that's the problem, bro. It's too much fucking pandering. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, is this, right? Like, if, if sometimes you need a motherfucker to not just tell you that you trash, but to give you constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. What you do might be trash. You know what I'm saying? I personally think that when she rapped over that beat, that it just wasn't the right beat. To explain a story over because what's the show associated with the song Who Shot You? You what's the name Death? Uh uh this was um Pac. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, I felt like she could have conveyed that message on a better beat. But when yeah. I said that, I was greeted <laughs> with how I hate black women meanwhile, and how I don't love my daughters because they're black and all types of shit. Like, you know, it's Meanwhile, uh didn't Meg just drop another track saying, I'm gonna put this shit to rest for <laughs> like you've been said that on mad songs now, but far as that, no, I was saying academics could chill out with the with the disrespect. Like his, I'm gonna tell you the yo, disrespect. Bro, I'm, not I'm not, I would, I'm not defending, but I'm gonna tell you. I'm but he be wild. I'm like, I'm gonna this, this. I'm like, damn. I'm gonna tell you what his thing is, bro. I'm gonna tell because I, bro, I worked with this nigga for three years straight, bro. I'm gonna tell you what his thing be because. People be saying shit about him all the time, right? No, nah, facts. People say all types of shit about him all the time. And they and, and be a lot of times he might not say shit. So the one moment where he ca if he catch you slipping, like if you do a song that everybody think is trash, or you do something that's not favorable, he goes in extra because like that's his personality. But I'm telling you, one thing I learned about him, bro, that's a person. He turns that shit on and off. I done been sitting here like with him, like bro, sitting right here with him right before them lights come on. This motherfucker have sleep, talking. Them lights come on, boop, turn that shit on, bro. Them lights that should go off. He on family time with his moms, his his brother. With like, bro, he's. A, I don't. I, a, it's a tons of shit that I don't agree with that he's done. You know what I mean? But he know that. But at the same time, it's like, bro, we in a different day and age than we was. Nah, that's why. I, that's mm -hmm. why I said me. Besides the woman shit, yeah, I fuck with him. I think, um, personally, to be honest, what do you expect? This nigga has. I think he's one of the few people that I look at and I say, yo, like he really came from nothing and grinded his way to the top. Like when it comes to like this media space, absolutely. Because a lot we talk about nepotism, we talk about like people just being close relationships. Not a fact. I feel like, and a lot of people had something to say about you. Yeah. So what do if if a nigga if nobody opened the door for me, right? Nobody yeah. gave me a shot. You be wild and I get on the top. Hell yeah. And you yeah. a multi millionaire? You be man, <laughs> fuck all you niggas. I'm doing a. That's why I say I understand. I, like I'm, I don't be mad at it because like bro, what you want to say? Nobody yeah. gave this nigga. No, bro, he doing this by himself. Nobody gave my nothing. No nothing. facts. So what the fuck you want to say? No facts. I mean, it's you know. That's why I. And fuck a lot him. of people, I ain't gonna lie. A lot of people that be don't like him. Just they really just want to be his friend so he could co-sign his shit. I've seen it with my own eyes. Like I, I've seen the same motherfuckers that talk crazy about him. He show me a DM like, yo, they just mad. I ain't post their shit. That's, Man, what, that's what that's what that should be, bro. But that ain't the way to go with him. Honestly, it, clearly, ain't, it ain't the way to go with nobody. No, for real. no. Clearly, the way to go with this nigga is to diss him. So he nah, was, you can't. what? You heard nah. what he said about Roy Moore? He said, bro, about the smartest, who? the Roy Moore, he was like, the smartest thing to do was to re respond to me. Nah, bro. He, bro, he ain't, that's the only way he you get something. nigga, because I'm going to tell you, bro, you got to, it's like. You're going to get more I'm followers. You, I'm a, that ain't even a point, bro, because it's that's not the point. It's like, you ever see, of course, you've seen the Hebrew Israelites before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, whether you believe in what they believe in or not, you can't debate with them. You want to know why you will always lose a debate with them? Because they not they're not objective at all. 
they're not never going to hear your side. Mm. So it's like if you're a person that you're on the other side of what Ag does and he's going at it with you, he's not never going to hit. Like, he's not hearing your side. But the win is getting him to talk about you. Nah, it's not a win, bro. Because that also is, is, is detrimental too. Because then you have, yes, don't, bro, Takashi says something to me and he commented about me one time. And I got 7,000 followers in one day. Maybe eight. No bullshit. 8,000 followers in one day a jump. And he told, he said, suck my dick. You know what I mean? It's not always a good thing to be in a certain... Like, I don't believe in at all promotion is good promotion. I don't believe in that. You know what I mean? Because if you, if you if it's some shit that's unfavorable to who you are, then it's even harder to push yourself to the forefront. You feel me? So nah, for, he's what, not a nigga that you want to... One, like, one thing I like about these niggas, bro, is like just me coming up. Mm -hmm. It's like but, but shit like that. It's like, man, you show these niggas love, you respect me. Yo, I'm trying to clap without a... Eh, I don't see your shit. Your shit go by, by the waistline. Let you diss a nigga. Like, now everybody... No, but I'm going to tell you, bro. Like, like I just tell you something about entertainment, and I learned this, bro. Like, nobody gives a fuck until it's a thing. Like, like you could be... Bro, you've been working on this for a long time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I've seen you have, like, dope moments and all that, and you still growing, right? Like, um, I went and say... Because I believe that your thing is a thing right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about, like, for the... From the observation standpoint, I follow you. once people like when it's something that they can be at now, it's like then they want to, yo man, I always fuck all that. You feel me? Yeah. And you've been pulling yourself up. You feel me? So no, nah, I appreciate. It. Yo, so, let me yeah. ask something before we get out of here. Then, since you work with both of these niggas, or since you like Who? Drake and you work with Meek, you seen the? Uh, when I, I don't work with Meek. Meek just my homie. Like, well, that's I, your man. Sorry, right, cool, yeah, cool, cool, I don't cool. work with him. So. When you said about consistency, you was talking about Drake, mm -hmm. but you compared him to Jay Z. Yeah, and when I was on here with uh, drama, I was yeah, like, I remember that. I was like, I think, in, from my culture, mm -hmm. my perspective, I think Meek is the closest to Jay Z. But you've been close to Jay Z, mm -hmm. you've been close to Meek, and you know a lot about what Drake got going on too. What would you What would you say? I, I mean, so so I understand why you said that because I was drama's my like personal friend. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like I understand why you said that. Um. With Meek, I think the only thing that's ever held Meek back in his career was just like outside of music. Um, out him outside of music, conversation wise, like when he like social media. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. Cause again, I understand why you said that because Meek for a lot of people, I used to say this shit on Everyday Struggle a lot. I used to I used to always say never count Meek out. Because he speaks for, he speaks for motherfuckers that will never, you know what I mean? With for certain people that will never get a chance to be heard, mm. and like, I, see, it's different for me because I, I, I'm not gonna sit here and say, yeah, I was a part of, I wasn't a part of Meek's come up, but I, I was around, like, I was around Meek in the studio before when he had to do a verse for Miss Jade. And had to leave because he had the ankle monitor on at a certain time. Mm. I was around Meek when the first Dream Chasers came. Because that's one thing about Meek, bro. I could not... One thing I love about Meek is I could not see Meek for two years. If that nigga see me tomorrow, he going to treat me like he always treated me. He going to be like, what you doing? Come to the studio later. Come listen to some shit with me. Come vibe out with me. You know what I mean? So I've been around in a lot of different instances. And I personally know the grind he's had to get where he's at. I just think that like... When it comes to how people view the Jay Z shit, it's more of a like stature thing. Oh, accolades, maybe. Accolade, yeah, it's accolades, stature thing, or whatever. But to me, see, that's what I'm saying. It's like to me, Meek is just as important as anybody to me. When it comes to, to me, he's the most important artist to come out of Philly. You know what I'm saying? Like for for, for real. I, and I, I I worked with Beanie Siegel. You know what I'm saying? But like Beanie Siegel got it to a certain point, and Meek took it to a, a point where Beans didn't get to take it. You know what I'm saying? I, well, let me ask you this. We just having this conversation in the barbershop, conversation in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. What you think held... So you, wait, you already answered this. So you think the social media is what held me career that bad? Not what held him... Not, it didn't hold his career. I think it's the perception, right? Jay was a person who, like, he didn't really talk much. You know what I mean? It, even when it wasn't no social media, the only way you get in a conversation out of him is if he going to Angie Martinez mm -hmm. or when he did something with Sway. He was very selective about the times he spoke and when he spoke and what he spoke about. So he's very intentional. The thing about Meek is, is like, Meek going to say how he feel, when he feel, whatever. I don't give a fuck what's going on. If it's good, if it's bad, if he's inquiring about something, he's going to say it. 
because that's just who he is. Like mm. me, what I love, like even to this day, like what he's still like a ki a kid. I'm not dissing him by no means about like how adamant he is about shit. Like you'll be sitting there and me could be like, "Yo, uh, where you get that sweatsuit from? Who do that? Let me look them niggas up." Like he he's very inquisitive. Mm. So what I'm saying is, is like the social media, it because it did help him in ways too. Because all the memes and all of the shit that that does add to a person's profile. But I'm talking about perception, how they view a stature. Like they look at, I feel like they look at Drake in the sense of a Jay Z only because of like his stature in the game and how he handled certain shit. But he's falling, you know, into the social media. Oh, I say because Drake played that game too. He, he played that game too. To everybody. No, he played that game too. But me, you know so me? why why you think why you think Meek ain't like at, at a higher level? I guess if, I don't. Th what 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 you mean at a higher level? I, like. I feel like he don't get respect. You talking about little? I feel like he. Nah, he don't. Nah, he don't get the. He don't. He doesn't get the respect that. But I think it's perception, yo. People see. I I know Meek, and even for the, the even for the way I know Meek, I don't know him. There's a lot of ways I don't know Meek. You know what I mean? But I've I've known Meek for damn near twenty years. You know what I'm saying? Um. People don't know him personally. Like if if people really knew him more personally, then I think their perception would change. Mm. But what people get on the camera is different than who he is. Personally, and I'm not saying that he's being somebody that he not. I'm just saying it's like he got a lot of depth to him. I think that like Championships was an album where he showed a lot of depth. Mm. He showed a lot of depth. He showed a lot of like, you know, story, what he's going through in his life. And I think that like since then, people want to just hold him to that. And if he wants to move on, it's like even with the, um, what's the shit? You know how people are like, oh, you still running around talking about spinning the block and da 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 da. Jay Z still was rapping about shooting when he did Blueprint Three. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not like shooting is always meant to be taken literal. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I don't nah, know. I ain't gonna lie, man. Meek is like my. You know how they be like, man? Who is the person you would like your top interview type? He one of them, like top five. Nah, he's yo, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. Like Meek is a very, very, very like even the shit that's been transpiring in the past weeks and all of that with like. Like his man, like that's that's my man too. You know what I mean? Like I know him since he was thirteen. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's 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 shit like that, right? Like I think like perception is that because I don't I, I can't say but so much because Dean I love Dean and I love Meek. You know what I'm saying? But it's like I think people perceive Meek if he's at a certain level to not respond, but he's still a block nigga, so he gonna play. Whatever, he, whatever he feel like somebody gonna play with him, he gonna play that with them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think that kind of sometimes takes away how people perceive him. But I know him, mm -hmm. and I I know what his intent is with a lot of things. But sometimes it just don't translate. You know what I mean? Nah, this shit was hard. We gotta probably do another one. Damn, yeah, I'm I'm down. This shit was crazy. This shit was hard. <laughs> bro. I ain't gonna lie. We, 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 we can do some shit, you bro. I appreciate me? you for pulling up, man. I appreciate um, you for having me, man. For real. I can't. I don't even know what to say, man. Wayne know everybody. <laughs> like, yo, is it uh, anything you pushing or anything? Or um, yeah. Like? So, um, if if anybody's been paying attention to me, um, I've been posting. You know, out the box, it's um, out the box is a brand that I'm building. You know what I mean? Um, where I'm telling stories with sneakers and I'm creating some content out of that. Me and my son gonna be doing like reviews and all of that type stuff. So it's like. Man, um, it's family business. You know what I mean? I work in entertainment. You know what I mean? My son wants to work in a few things too. And he's at that age where he's figuring it out for himself. So we got some stuff that we're doing with Out the Box. So I just say, stay tuned. Stay tuned. You know what I mean? Everything I got coming with Out the Box. You know what I'm saying? Um, follow the page, Out the Box 24 on IG. Um, and we got we got some special stuff coming, man. I appreciate you having me on your platform for me to even share these stories. Man, I appreciate nigga. I appreciate you for coming on the <laughs> motherfucking platform, man. Yo, J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Well, you know, it's a wrap. We out.